Hey there ladies and gents, this is the Bearded Gamer and today we'll be looking at 11 games that you can run on your laptop's integrated graphics or your old computer. For this list, I tried to include games that will be fun to play even by today's standards and not just mention very undemanding games just cause old PCs can run them. Most of them have been extremely successful when they were released and for good reason. In fact, I would recommend playing most of these games even if you have a high-end PC. So let's get right to it. Let's start off with a few first-person shooters, shall we? Bioshock is probably a game most of you already heard of. In case you've never played it before, it's currently on discount on the Steam Summer Sale and you can get it for just 4 euros. So here's your chance to get it for cheap. Although it's probably the most demanding game on this list, it actually will run on integrated graphics such as the Intel HD 3000, which comes along older Intel i3, i5 or i7 CPUs. It will also run on older processors such as the Core 2 Duo or an Athlon X2, but in those cases you will also need a dedicated GPU such as a GeForce 7900 GTX or a Radeon HD 3870. These are cards that were released in 2006 and 2007 respectively and are now similar in performance with the integrated graphics provided by the CPU GPU combos mentioned earlier. 2 gigabytes of RAM should be enough for an adequate experience. Fear or First Encounter Assault Reckon is a horror game that was released in 2005. It's actually quite a scary game and even though 11 years old, the gameplay is excellent and will most probably succeed in making you jump out of your seat a few times. It will run on pretty much any PC that is 10 years old or less. A Pentium 4 with 1GB of RAM will be enough and a GPU such as a Radeon 9800 Pro which was released in 2003 will run it at pretty much full settings. If you have a computer that still boots up, it will probably run this game without a problem. One of the best games of all time with a score of 96 on Metacritic, Half-Life 2 needs no introduction. When the original Half-Life was released, it also got scores around 96 out of 100 from various sources and everyone thought, there's no beating that, right? Well, along came Half-Life 2 which revolutionized gaming. The physics in the game were unlike anything we'd seen before and its story made you feel like you were part of it. Fighting the Combine was intense and your sidekicks throughout the game Alex and her massive robot dog named Dog felt like family. You wanted to protect them no matter what. Even if you have a modern gaming PC but haven't played this game, do yourself a favor. Get this game. As for the required specifications, a potato. That's right, a potato will run this game. As long as this potato has a Pentium 4 CPU running at 3 GHz and 1 GB of RAM and a graphics card compatible with DirectX 9. Okay, as far as potatoes go, that's pretty advanced, but as far as computers go, that's nothing. Get Steam, get this game for 10 euros, or 2 euros if you get it on the Steam Summer Sale until July the 4th, and enjoy! No, no! Careful, Lamar! Those are quite fragile! Oh, fuck! Sorry, I'm all but certain it was... Gordon Freeman. Doom 3 was released in 2004 and I still remember all the pre-release hype surrounding it. The graphics are gonna be so good that no currently existing GPU will be able to run it at full settings. Or you'll need a GPU with 256 megabytes of RAM to run it. 256! Well, let me tell you that you can run it on less than that. Any one of the lower end Pentium 4 or Athlon XPC PUs running at around 2.5 GHz alongside half a gigabyte of RAM and pretty much any GPU that supports DirectX 9 will be fine. To be honest, before looking up the recommended specifications required, I thought this game would not be eligible for this list as it would be a little more heavyweight than what we're aiming for. The reason for this is because I remember Doom 3 looking pretty sweet 
graphics wise but in 2004 it did and actually even for today's standards it still sort of does if someone showed me a screenshot of the game and i didn't re realize it was doom 3 i'd never guess it's from a 12 year old game <laughs> Torchlight is your classic over-the-top camera angle action hack and slash RPG. You're set loose in the wilderness, kill random monsters, pick up loot, do various quests, level up, and your end goal is to reach a final boss. The thing is, getting there is a seriously fun experience. The effects look really good for a game with such low system requirements, and there are thousands of items to pick up and chant and upgrade your character with. To run this game, you'll need a CPU running at 800 MHz or more, 1 GB of RAM, and practically any GPU will work. Your pet has departed. Neverwinter Nights 2 is a different type of RPG. It has similar elements to games such as Diablo or the previously mentioned Torchlight, you have to do quests and progress through a quest line while killing monsters and looting items. The difference is, you have a party that follows you around and helps you out with their various abilities such as healing, tanking, etc. And you can pause the game at any point, even during combat, to assign each one of your companions something to do. If one of your companions is getting low, for example, and the fight is getting difficult, then you can pause Set your healer's next action to be to heal the near-dead companion and then put a shield on the tank for good measure. As soon as you unpause, those actions will take place in the order that you selected. It's not as fast-paced as other RPGs, but it's very fun nonetheless. You can run the game on a Pentium 4 or Athlon 64 running at 3GHz and 1GB of RAM. Recommended GPUs are the Radeon X1600 Plus or the 6800 GT that come with 256 megabytes of RAM. If you've ever heard of Skyrim, and if you haven't, what the heck, Morrowind is its granddad. It's the third game in the Elder Scrolls series and it's one of the best games I played growing up. It's an open world experience unlike anything we'd ever seen at that time and it definitely left its mark on the world of gaming. There's so many things to do that you don't even have to follow the main storyline to enjoy the game. The soundtrack, which is composed by Jeremy Soule, fits the world of Morrowind perfectly and is one of the main reasons I kept playing it day after day, expansion after expansion. You can run it on anything better than a Pentium 3 or Athlon processor running at 500 MHz and 256 MB of RAM. Any GPU with 64 MB of memory should be enough. There are a bunch of fan-made mods for the game, some of which are basically high-resolution texture packs that give the game a completely new look but will require more resources to run properly. If you have a dual-core PC with at least 2 GB of RAM, check out Morrowind Rebirth. I still listen to some of the SimCity 3000 tracks to this day. They're just simply good quality music. Look up the track Broadway if you're into jazz and you'll understand what I mean. So in a few words, your goal in SimCity 3000 is to build a functional city. That's it. In a few more words, you'll need to set residential or industrial areas where in each of these areas, the game will build factories, skyscrapers, shops, or other buildings and depending on how well organized your city is, and by that I mean your roads, electricity supply, water supply, etc., it will grow accordingly. But the more your city grows, the more advanced services you will need to start providing your people. 
You will start off with a school, for example, and eventually you will need to build a university. You will need police and fire departments as well as a jail. People don't like jail, so be sure to keep it away from your residential areas. As for the required specifications for this game, they're so low they're not even worth mentioning. Let's just say you can run it. But having played this game a lot in the past, I know that if your city goes well, it will grow a lot. And that eventually puts more strain on the CPU and could utilize more RAM. In theory, you can run the game optimally on a Pentium 3 or Athlon MP processor and 64 megabytes of RAM. Ideally though, a Pentium 4 with 256 megabytes of RAM would ensure that even large cities don't cause graphical lag. The game mainly runs off the CPU rather than the GPU, so graphics cards that support DirectX 8 will be okay as long as the other specifications are met. Not many games on Steam get the overwhelmingly positive status, so when you see a game that has, you can be certain that it has something special. Whether it's the graphics, gameplay, or the concept, it made more than 95% of the people who rated it give it a positive review. Hotline Miami is one of those games. When I first saw the gameplay trailer of the game, I thought, really? Overwhelmingly positive? Then I actually played the game though. You get right into the action as soon as you start, and it's very simple, which makes it easy to enjoy. Just run around wrecking people, picking up their guns, and then wrecking more people, and executing them when they're knocked down on the floor. That's pretty much it, and it's awesome. Sure, there's some sort of storyline along the lines of, you cleared this building of baddies, now move on to the next building of baddies, and so on. It's a fairly more recent game than the ones mentioned before, but it wasn't designed to require a high-end PC in the first place. So, according to the recommended specs, you can run it on a 1.4 GHz single-core CPU and 1 GB of RAM. A DirectX 9 compatible GPU with 32 MB of RAM will have no issues running the game. If you want something simple and fast-paced, you'll enjoy Hotline Miami. When Plants vs. Zombies was released, everyone was playing it. The reason was probably because it was super simple and yet super fun. It's called Plants vs. Zombies. It was meant to be silly and it succeeded in the most entertaining way. So what's your goal? Plant... Plants. Not just any ordinary plants though, no. These plants have superpowers. They explode upon impact like landmines, they shoot stuff. But, the zombies attacking you also have special abilities. Some are very fast, so you need to down them quickly. Others jump over obstacles that you placed, so you'll need to improvise. It's a different approach to tower defense games, and it's awesome. You can run it on 1.2 GHz CPU, 1 GB of RAM, and a GPU that supports DirectX 8 with 128 MB of RAM. <laughs> Braid is one of the first indie games that came out and actually had a huge success. This, alongside some other indie gems, helped propel the indie gaming scene to where it's at right now. There's a lot of platformers out there, so in order for one of them to stand out from the lot, it needs to be special. And Braid is exactly that. Special. Not only does the game look beautiful, but the music also helps you immerse yourself into the game's story. A very interesting feature of the game is that you can rewind time so you can change something you did wrong, even dying. About the story, Tim supposedly is trying to get through all those levels to save a princess. Sounds pretty... meh. But it's actually a lot more interesting than that. Tim is a scientist and one of the people involved in creating the A-bomb. Apparently, the game is him dreaming and the reverse time part is him wishing there was a way to change past mistakes, such as creating the A-bomb in the first place.
To run the game, you'll need a 1.4 GHz CPU, 1 GB of RAM, and a GPU that supports DirectX 9 and Pixel Shader 2. So that's it! Obviously there's a lot more games that could be included in the list, but I selected some that I grew up with and I know that they are great experiences that every gamer should have. Some of these games are and will continue to be in top games of all times lists and for good reason. Do you have any suggestions on what games I might have missed out on? Please let me know in the comments section below. So anyway. That's going to be it for now. Thank you guys for watching. This is the Bearded Gamer. Over and out. I'm all but certain it was Gordon Freeman.